When I wake up, I usually wake up if it's during the week, between 5 and 6 a.m. So usually when I make coffee in the morning, it's always with my uh, beloved French press. And I go directly into my office, which is, you know, about 20 feet away because it's here at home. Uh, answer emails, I'll do my merchandise store orders things, I do my own bookkeeping, so I'll do that in the morning. And then once I feel like it's like a reasonable hour to start working, um, maybe around like eight or nine, I'll, I'll try to practice. Some days I go hiking, either by myself or with a really good girlfriend of mine, Colleen. But for the most part, I would say if I don't have a session, like a recording session, if I don't have to go to another studio, I'm here most of the time. I guess, you know, they have left brain, right brain, and for me, I'm really split down the middle. When I'm making music, when I'm performing, that's when it's the completely carnal side that's all just emotion, feeling, visceral, like physical. In my day-to-day -day life, I'm extremely methodical, and maybe it might be stereotypical, but I think it's like the Chinese Asian side of me. And my parents are both music teachers, and they're super conservative. So not only was I born in China and kind of raised in that uh, more old school traditional environment, I'm just gonna say I was forced to practice for eight hours a day, every day, um, from when I started cello at age seven. I didn't really have that much of a childhood. I didn't really hang out with friends. I didn't, there, there was really no time. It was like kind of uh, forced upon me that I had to have uh, a very instilled regiment because childhood is not seen as like childhood. It's like training ground for becoming a viable adult. And a part of me, like I always wanted to rebel and you know, we know how it turned out, like how, how it's manifested itself. I think just like growing up in that environment, it, it's now looking back, I'm actually really grateful for it. You know, we have certain things that happen that really like stick with us in our mind. And I remember the first time I actually saw a metal show in person. Um, I was in my second year of college and I was dating a guitar player. There weren't a lot of people there, but it was like, you know, dark and like dirty and there was like, like sh shit all over the ground. I don't know, I just kind of loved it. It's the complete opposite of like the very, you know, proper background and also even USC is extremely like, you know, everything's proper, everything has to be done a certain way. So I remember I went there and I watched them play and it was just so loud because I'd never been to a non like non-classical concert. I don't know, I just I just liked it. And it's like you can do anything you want. There's no one judging like how you're playing metal or whatever it is. And so after that show, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do it. This is I'll figure it out. Sometimes I would tell people, I'm like, yeah, like I'm gonna play like metal cello. And they're like, okay, Tina, that's cute, that's nice. And I think I just like learned um, I guess over my life so far, that you really have to just take things into your own hands and make things happen or they don't happen. That video cost, uh, it was like, it was like $6,100. And I remember this because this was 2009. So I've been in LA for five years and that was like, all the money that I had saved. That was like my life savings. I'm like, am I crazy to spend all of my money on a music video? It's probably pretty crazy, right? And I remember like my parents, oh, they were so angry. Like they were so upset. They're like, what are you doing? You drop out of USC on a full scholarship. Like you're like half naked in gold body paint, like you know, with your hair. Like they were just like not into it, but it wasn't even about sex. It was almost like a romanticized version of like, just like trying to express myself and so, so many like pent up, like repressed things. So I think it was like maybe a month or less than a month after the video came out, um, John Debney contacted me and it's like, that electric cello video was really cool. Do you want to play on Iron Man 2? You could play like solos. I was like, sure, I'll do that. Um, and then Hans Zimmer contacted me and he's like, oh, I'm working on uh, Sherlock Holmes. I want you to be a soloist. So I, I went and did that. Uh, Brian Tyler reached out to me. So it was like a lot of uh, I think, yeah, like, like how did it happen it was completely by accident. I wasn't meaning to become a session musician or to work on soundtracks. And I think just for me, continuing to always post um, and to show everything that I'm doing, just because I like to, but it also helps with like, it's like accidental marketing, that's what I call it. And so I think getting kind of like an early start on that helped a lot because I, I, I was able to amass a lot of material. So now I have it's like almost, I think, 150 videos on, on YouTube from like different things, from live concerts. 
you know, just kind of like see the process of how things have developed. And yeah, that's been like the journey as far as the online YouTube stuff. These are uh, most of my instruments. Um, this is my main instrument. This is my uh, like my nice classical cello. It was made in 1880 in Paris, France. This is an instrument I've uh, toured and played within all of my classical recordings. So this is one of my electric cellos. I have a few of them. I play Yamaha electrics. This one's name is White Walker. We have this uh, tagle harpa, which is like a very ancient uh, Viking type instrument. And I first heard it on the score for uh, the Vikings. And I, I record a cello for that project, but I also heard this other instrument. I'm like, oh, what is that? That's super cool sounding. So that's what that is. Um, this is my erhu, which is a Chinese instrument. Actually, it's really interesting because there's no fingerboard. Like the, uh, the strings are kind of suspended in the air. And uh, this girl, who is known as Mikla Chu on YouTube, she plays video game music uh, using this little guy, which is called an automaton. So I think it's really fun, because... <laughs> so that's what this one is. <laughs> I started touring with Hans Zimmer. Um, the last two years when he did his first tour and also last year. I'm also working on music for Bentley. So I just, uh, last week I signed a partnership with Bentley as a brand partner. Um, so I'm writing the music for the new 2018 Bentega Hybrid, which is the SUV. So they asked me if I could do a cello based piece that starts out acoustic um, to kind of start, you know, more traditionally and then evolve into a more intense uh, piece that grows in intensity. No way on earth you could possibly pits like that clearly uh, in real life on a cello. So it, it is cheating a little bit, but I think of using these recordings, um, these samples, as more of like a digitized version. So it's like, you know, it's a, it's a sample, it's like a synthesizer cello. Ta da! I think it's just like never stopping. Like every time something like goes wrong and it happens a lot, cause like people, I feel like people only see the things that go right. You know, they're like, oh wow. Like, you know, she, oh, you've been so lucky. So many things have happened. I'm like, you have no idea. <laughs> like the stuff that's happened. It's like 80% of everything I've tried has failed, you know, but you just have to, you have to keep going. And it's like that discipline that forces you to, all right, this doesn't work next. This doesn't work next. Like you just don't stop. I feel like the foundation for playing the cello or playing any instrument is in the end, like underneath, you know, the marketing, the packaging, what you look like, what you're wearing, your videos, your photos. It's like in the end, it's your pure raw, um, like the thing that you're actually doing. And for me, I think if I hadn't built that amount of muscle memory as a child growing up and to continue, you know, maintaining it, it'd be very difficult to express myself. If you are doing things that require a little bit more technical uh, dexterity, it's really important that that foundation is there. And how do you get that foundation? You have to practice for like, what is it, 10,000 hour rule? You know, I think minimum of 10,000 hours of doing anything to where it becomes so natural that it's like sleeping or eating, you know, it's part of, uh, part of just who you are. Yeah. 